get right into it today. Spirit-empowered relationships, the role of children to parents, and Christ and the church. In Ephesians chapter 5, where the Apostle Paul is writing while he's in prison, he's incarcerated, he's writing to the church of Ephesus, and he gets to the area of relationships, and we've been going through that uh, with the Apostle Paul. He's been talking about families. And one of the things he's been mentioning is this. He says, he says, awaken sleeper, for the days are evil. Understand what the will of the Lord is. The days are evil. Awaken and understand the days we're living in. This is what he says. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart that the Lord is near submitting to each other in the fear of God. In other words, everyone's created in the image of God, submitting to each other. And so we got into that. We talked about that. We talked about husbands and wives. And today we're going to get into children. Next week we're going to get into parenting, how to parent those little tykes. That's next week. It needs, so, it needs its own time. So today is the role of children and parents. The foundation of human relationships is this. Children, honor your parents. Moses, on Mount Sinai, God gave him the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments dealt with God's relationship with mankind, an individual and God. From number five to the end, he deals with relationship with each other. And the fundamental relationship that controls society and its health is how parents treat their children and how children treat their parents. It is the fundamentals of society. We just mentioned earlier that society is based upon the family. And when the family is destroyed, a society will be destroyed. God created them both male and female, said, subdue the earth, multiply. And so now we have today, listen, I don't believe there's some clandestine people someplace in some smoky room, some basement someplace, coming up with a plan to mess up the family around the world. There is a spiritual battle that is going on. If you don't think the things you're seeing on the news and the things we see happening is not a spiritual battle, you're mistaken. There is a spiritual battle that is going on to take the hearts and minds of men and women and to destroy families. If you're going to destroy a society, you must destroy a family. And that is what is happening. Where there is such a destruction going on. So today we're going to talk about children Honor your parents. A society that destroys the family destroys itself. All law and order. And listen, if a child does not know how to deal with its parents and be responsible to authority, the child would not be able to hold a job. The child would not be able to, would be, would not be able to handle itself in society. So all the basic premises of all societal um, break, uh, building of a society is based upon a child's interaction with his or her parents. You cannot negate that. And there's a move today to take power away from parents. In California, in the last two weeks, I, I, I did a double check. By the way, anytime you read something you think it's hard to believe, make sure you double, triple check. Make sure it's not some fake thing that, you, that people write up. I checked CNN. I checked NPR. I checked um, BBC. Fox News, MSNBC, and I checked them all, and this is what happened in California that passed a bill that a 12-year-old, if the 12-year-old does not want to meet the parents, they can go to the state, and the state will take them. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. You know what happened in Nazi Germany? The children would turn their parents in to the government if they did not follow the Nazi rule of law. Things are being set up. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is stuff that's happening in our culture today. We could go on and on. There are people doing things, and your child cannot get an aspirin in the school system, but they can get an abortion. They can get told to go to Planned Parenthood. In certain states, a child can get puberty blockers and be chemically castrated. So uh, this is what's going on in our culture. This is not on a political thing. This is what, what's going on today. So what does the Bible say about that? A society that destroys the family destroys itself. Here is from Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments, says this. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land 
the Lord your God has given you. So the best thing you and I can do in this crazy society is that you and I do our part by living good, godly lives that you and I can be a catalyst to help others. Even more importantly than anything else is to take care of our own homes so we have authority to help other people in their homes. Even if you're single or married, all of us are children of somebody. So this applies to everyone. Honor your father and mother and it may go well with you. It may be long and it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is given you. Plato said this. On the scale of human decencies, honor of parents is second only to honor of God. Everything else is predicated upon your relationship with your parents. Now, when I'm talking about this, some of you are struggling with it. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you've ever heard, there was a nursery rhyme, not a nursery rhyme, nursery story, not, not very popular, but it's out there. You might have heard of it. It's called Grimm's, it's called Grimm's Fairy Tale, and this is what happened. It was about uh, a husband and wife, and the husband had a father who was getting senile and getting worse by the day, and they had children too, and he, was, they had, he lived with them. And he was sloppy, he ate, got himself over the place, he was not thinking properly, he was basically senile. And so the wife was getting agitated with him. She said, you know, honey, this, and she basically got her husband to turn against his own father. So they put the guy, the older man, in the corner and gave him a bowl to eat out of, a, a nice bowl. He broke the bowl. She was so infuriated. They were farmers. She said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to feed him, we're going to give him a trough from the pigs and we're going to put food in that and put them in a different room. A couple of weeks gone by. Their son is sitting there, and he's sitting there, and he's carving something with wood. And the mother asks, what are you doing? He says, I'm making a feeding trough so I can feed you when you're old. The couple cried, broke down in tears, grabbed the old man, brought him to the table, gave him the best food ever, and treated him well. Now, that's a, that's a nursery story. But it illustrates what happens in our culture today. You see, we have to be very careful. You will, you will sow what you reap. And we're called to take care of our parents. We're called to honor our parents. What does that look like? Maybe some of you had lousy parents. Maybe you don't even know who your parents are. Maybe you were abused or sexually abused or hurt or you're still dealing with wounds today from your parents. Well, how do we handle that? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about what we are to do with our parents. So all relationships originate from God. This is the background of our, you guys do me a big favor. Could you close those blinds? Uh, it's, it's actually hurting my eyes and then I can't see the screen. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. All relationships originate from God's relationship with himself. All relationships. Before there was any relationships, there was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three in one. I spent some time describing what the Trinity is. I'm not going to do it today. But let me just say this. They were in perfect unity with each other. God did not need mankind. God chose to bring us into his creative order. But in that, between the God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all equal in value, but they have different function. God the Father is like the nucleus of the cell. He makes the final decisions, but they're in mutual submission to each other. Each part has a different part working together. And so this is what happens. It's called the Trinity and mutual submission. We talked about that, okay? Submission is key to all relationships. Without submission, you can't even dance with your wife. Without submission, you have to submit to someone else at a different time. And there is a hierarchy of order that God has placed on society. And without that hierarchy of order, there is disorder and chaos. And within that order, its design is to help human beings flourish to love each other and to love God. That's basically what it's all about. So submission is the key to all relationships, and it is almost like the military. It really is. You have God the Father, right? And then God was over both man and woman. He created them both male and female. That's all he created, male and female. That's all there is. There's male and female, and there are people that have psychological problems, and people have physiological problems, and we give grace to them. We love them. We help them. But what you're hearing from our culture today is not true. The Bible's final word is he created them both male and female. We give grace to those that are struggling. But do we do not help you understand that? That's what I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And we will stand on the Bible. But we give grace to those that are struggling. 
We give great, and by the way, a lot of people that are struggling with, well, I'm not gonna get into that right now. We'll stay focused. Bottom line is this, God created them both male and female. So yeah, thank you for laughing and letting me know that I need to continue on before I, actually, I'm not gonna step in a bad place. I'm gonna step on the scriptures. For we, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 21 to 33, I'm gonna bring you the context in what we're talking about today. You guys tracking with me? All right, here we go. For we, people in the church, are members of who? Of Christ, the body, of his flesh and his bones. The Bible says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. King James Version says, leave and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Now, when God created both male and female, he created them without having parents. But after that, he gave the order. The order is this, the design is this. You are to raise the children. The moment the baby is born, there is a separation process that begins to happen to help that child to eventually to be on its own. It comes a point where a father, uh, where a mother and father need to let their children go to another place. When they get married, the Bible says, he shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. It means cut off. Now, you still honor your parents, but you used to become one flesh. So a job of a parent is to help the kids get out of the house. Can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> We're having today a failure to launch in a lot of young people today. We've got to help them get out on their own. So our whole job is to help train them in the way that they should go. That one day we'll cut them, they'll, they'll be on their own. And that means that uh, I'm going to speak to the Italian moms. I'm a, my last name's Bucci. I can get away with it. And my wife is Hispanic, so we can talk to, the, we can talk to those two groups only. <laughs> but when you get married, it's a husband and wife, and they are their own separate entity. They don't have to listen to their parents anymore, but they're always called to honor their parents. But they don't have to listen to everything they say. Some of you have in-laws that should be outlaws. And I know some people that the best thing you can do is separate yourself from them. However, you must do it very carefully and with great respect and always show them honor. But you're not called to be under an abusive relationship. For example, if someone is speaking bad about my, if my family, mom and dad, I love you, you're watching me. But if they start knocking my wife down and saying, I'm going to say, uh, listen, mom and dad, I love you but I'm going to have to separate myself from you. I'm here for you if you need me, but I will not allow you to abuse my flesh, my wife, nor will I let you speak death upon my children. And so I'm going to keep separate from you, but I want to honor you. I love you and I care about you, but I'm also my own entity. There's a way to do that without calling them names. So some of you have to do that, but you want to get rid of the toxicity of unforgiveness and bitterness. And this is a tough one. We're going to look at it today. You guys tracking with me okay? That's why the Bible says you should leave, okay? We should leave and cleave. So if you have a, and, and <laughs> this is tough because I don't have, I don't, my kids have not gotten married and I'm not, and I'm not seeing how they raise their kids. I know how difficult it is, sort of. Some of you are like, oh, to me going, I wish my mother-in-law was here. No, okay. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, this is the great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you, in particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So this is the context of this passage. Now we get to children. Can you see that, everybody? It's all together. Now we get to this. Children, now the parents are happy. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. The apostle Paul is actually quoting Deuteronomy, and he's sharing that it is a promise that God gives you. It's the only ten commandments. All the commandments are saying, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Here it says, you will honor your parents that it would go well. This is a blessing. So if you want to bless a society, bless your parents even if they're not acting in a proper way, you can still honor them, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. A promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long on the land. God wants it to go well with you. And we have to show honor and respect to our parents. What does this command mean 
to obey and honor. I'm so glad you asked. What's the difference between honoring and obeying your parents? Okay? Children obey your parents. So obey simply means that when the children are young and they're, they're little children, they are to obey mom and dad as if they're God. Because a child's first representation of God is his parents. And as the child grows, the child becomes more cognitive, uh, knows what's going on. We're called to obey. You know, sociologists and psychologists would tell you the worst thing you can do for a child is give them no instruction at all. A child has no idea what to do. It's abusive to leave a child alone and make its own mind up. You tell a child what to do when it's young. Your name is Johnny. Your name is Susie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is what you are, and you tell them what to do. As they get older, they get their own identity. But the worst thing, you, even bad, even bad rules are better than no rules. If you put a child with no rules and no regulations, you actually do psychological damage to the child. If you neglect a child, a child could die. We've seen in some orphanages in some third world countries where the children were neglected, the babies were neglected, and they grew up with all sorts of problems. Some have even died. They've done studies, for example, psychological studies, where uh, they put children in, out in a play area to play, play around, and they were kind of, there was no fences in the yard, and the kids were kind of like, they were kind of timid in how they were running. There wasn't much happiness. There was anxiety. But when they put up fences, the kids played with all their heart and all their might because they had parameters. Children need parameters. Children need rules. Children don't know who they are when they're young. That's the, the father's job is to speak life into that child. You are, a, you are my son. You are my daughter. Now, like, well, we're not quite sure what you are, but maybe you'll be a giraffe one day, or maybe you'll be this or that. No, you are my son. You are my daughter. It is abusive to tell a child, we're going to wait and see what you become. What, are you kidding me? It's abuse. Now, I know that's not politically correct, but that's what the Bible says about that. It's very clear. We're, the men are supposed to speak, and women are supposed to speak over their children. Now, I understand some of you come from broken homes and that everyone has the perfect family, the husband and wife, but there is something called about parents. We have to work together. So, now, let me make it very clear that if a child is struggling with their health, we help them. We love them. We never, we never dehumanize anybody. We love them. But when they're young, you tell them what to do. Go clean your room. Johnny, do you want to clean your room today? No! Okay, okay. We don't want to get Johnny upset, so Johnny, you go ahead and stay there and do what you want. You do that, you're going to raise a criminal. They'll go from penitentiary to penitentiary, and they'll be criminals. You have to lay down the law when they're young, or they're going to be in the law, officers, um, prison, after that. So it's very important that we lay down the law when they're young. As they get older, then the mind develops. They're able to begin to tell the difference between right and wrong. But there's more. To, you tell them what to do when they're younger. When you get old, you start getting the decisions. So by the time they're an adult, they should be making their own decisions. And you're there as an, as an advisor. When you start off, you start off really strict. Does that make sense, everybody? There's a lot more we can say about it. Okay, so first commandment with the promise that it may go well for you. Children obey their parents before they are adults. So you need to obey your parents before they are adults. Now, look at this. Here's Jesus. Excuse me, everybody. Can you imagine having Jesus as a child? That'd be the most stressful thing in the world. You'd always feel like, I, I just don't measure up. Why? I have God for a son. I mean, I mean, how am I supposed to measure up? No matter what you do, he always knows better. Right? You're trying to find a way around the lake. He walks on the lake. Anyhow, <laughs> it'd be tough growing up that way, right? But look what Jesus did. And Jesus increased in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he grow this way? Are you ready? Boom. Then Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them but his mother kept these things in her heart. Jesus submitted to imperfect parents. Jesus actually knew more than his parents, and it was legitimate. But he was subject to them. He grew under their subject. He was, he was, um, he was submissive to them. He honored his parents. When he was on the cross, 
His last breath was coming. He looked at John, his disciple, says, Behold, John, your mother. In other words, take care of my mother. And so John took care of Jesus' mother until she died. Or made sure that he was taken care of. Jesus honored his parents and listened to them and was subject to them. When he was 12 years old, before he became a teenager, they couldn't find him. They went to Jerusalem for a festival. And after three days, they couldn't find They went and they found him in the temple. He says, where were you? Your mother and I are sick. He says, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? So that's what I told my children when I got, when I got lost in the mall. My parents would say, what's going on? Did you not know that I must be about the mall's business? Anyhow, <laughs> do you know what my parents used to do? This is terrible. When I was a kid in the 1970s, <clears throat> they used to go to the mall, and there'd be Sears, and they'd put me in a toy, to, toy, to, toy department and leave. <laughs> go out shopping for about 45 minutes, and they come back and get me. And by the way, there was a bunch of kids there without their parents. Then we used to get on a bicycle. I used to leave in the morning. And my mother had no idea, my father had no idea where I was. I was putting stone, throwing rocks at trains and all that kind of stuff like that. And then my mother would scream at night, Eric! Ding, 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 ding. And I'd hear it. I'd get on my bicycle, my 10-speed bicycle. I, before that, I had a banana seat with three speed. And I would come home. And then I'd get the well. And I would, no, I'm just kidding. I, but that's kind of how it was. But I was subject to them in those days, right? Jesus was subject to them, his mother, and she kept the things in her heart. So Jesus was subject to his parents as well. If Jesus was subject to his parents, shouldn't you be? Now, I'm speaking to the kids here. And by the way, when the Apostle Paul wrote this, uh, there were kids sitting there, teenagers. So teenagers, you need to respect your parents. The Bible does not say, parents, obey your children. It says, children, obey your parents. And we should listen to our parents and listen to their instruction and be subject to them. Now, whoever, this is what the Bible says, okay? Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. You're putting a curse on yourself when you don't honor your mother and father. God's like, okay, you don't want to honor them? I, I'm sorry, but you're stepping out of order. So you're going to have to receive the consequences of not honoring your parents. The consequences of not honoring your parents brings destruction. In 2 Timothy 3, 2, it talks about the end times. That's what it says about the end times. It says, from, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Our whole culture is teaching children to be disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, backbiters, haters of God, Violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. This is all part of the process. In fact, the Bible says this. And Isaiah, this is how you know a society is in trouble. These are the signs. I will make boys their leaders and toddlers their rulers. People will oppress each other. Man against man, neighbor against neighbor. Young people will insult their elders and vulgar people will sneer at the honorable. Do you not see this happening today in our culture? It's making fun of the elderly. It's making fun of those in authority. We see a disregard to authority at all. Don't trust authority. Go against authority. Don't honor authority. We see this happening. In fact, the Bible says this in Proverbs 30, 17. It says, The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be picked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. So we have birds in our house. We have vultures in cages. And if our kids disobey, we open the cages. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Come on, guys. All right? All right. That'd probably be good for Thanksgiving. Anyhow. How do you honor, in dis how do you honor dishonorable parents? Make no mistake. We have parents that are dishonorable. Maybe you've been beaten up. Maybe you've been mistreated, abused in any capacity, things that would drive us, make us feel so broken inside. What do you do when your parents are dishonorable to you? As I mentioned before, when you get married, you shall leave and cleave to your spouse and your separate entity. 
You're always called to honor your parents. Well, how do you do that when you're living in their house? You honor. If they step out of God's jurisdiction, you have a right to, to disobey honorably. I must obey God rather than my parents. If my parents said, you cannot read the Bible, you cannot pray, I, I, will, I will choose to obey God rather than them. But I'll do it respectfully. I will not call them names. You see, see what I'm saying? Even though I probably would call them names because I'm flesh and I had to ask for repentance. But you know what I'm saying, everybody. You have to come under God's grace and do what he says for us. I like what Jack Hayford said. He said this, if you disrespect your parents in that same proportion, there will become a disrespect or hatred for yourself. That's why you need to honor your parents or you will never be able to fully accept yourself. Many people cannot accept themselves because they do not honor God. How do you honor the dishonorable? Honor that they are the human channel that brought you life. God chose your parents to bring you forth life. And for that alone, you need to honor that aspect. That God's spirit was upon them when you were born. You became life. And God utilized them to bring you life. So honor God that he chose them as a channel. Even if that channel's not correct. You still honor the fact that they're your parents. Okay, that's the first thing. Honor the humanness. Listen, you make mistakes, I make mistakes. They're not perfect. They're not God. And frankly, your spouse is not God and you're not God. There's only one person that is perfect. It's God Almighty. And he's the perfect father we worship. Human fathers and mothers will make mistakes. And we have to give them grace as God gives us grace. So honor that they're human, honor their humanness, and Honoring parents brings blessings. Also, we're called to honor parents when they're old. What I see today in some places, it's quite disturbing. I've seen, I've seen animals treated better than some people in nursing homes. There's some, like, there's some like doggy daycare that does a better job to your mother. And some, some I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making it, well, actually, it's actually true. There's some doggy daycares that have better, they pick them up on a bus. It's unbelievable. They take them to the place, they give them massages and whatever. But sometimes these nursing homes, it's pretty disgusting. Just throw them in a nursing home and don't worry about it. Just sitting there all day long being neglected. That's wrong. We have a responsibility to take care of our parents. You know, in China and Japan, they have great reverence for their parents and they take care of their parents. We have a responsibility. In fact, Jesus dealt with this whole issue as well. Jesus dealt with this. What happened was the Pharisees and Sadducees, what they were doing, saying, hey, guys, you need to give to the temple fund. Give to the temple fund. And they were neglecting their parents, and Jesus called them hypocrites. You hypocrites, you're not taking care of your parents because you want them to give money to the church. It's wrong. Take care of your parents. Yes, you give to the church. Yes, you give to the temple, but not at the expense of not taking care of your parents. Jesus put them in their place in these verses. You can see in Matthew 15. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right. He prophesied about you. He wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He says, you should take care of that. In the New Testament, the Bible says for the widows, listen, we don't give, the church does not give food to the widows. If they have family, the family's job is to take care of the widows. If the family's not there, we'll do it. You're worse than an infidel if you don't take care of your own family. So we have a responsibility to take care of our family. What does that mean? Obviously, we're not going to be able to break down all the nuances of what your personal experiences are. But the bottom line is we're to honor them. If you're giving them money and they're going to the casinos, that's not, that's not honoring them. Seriously. If they can't take care of the money, then you do it in a way you honor them as, as, as your parents but you don't give them things where they hurt themselves. So that's part of the process we look at. So honor your parents brings blessing. Honor your parents when they're old. And finally, forgive your parents as God forgave you. Now, undeniably today, many of you might feel hurt. Maybe your parents blew it. Maybe your parents were hard on you. Maybe your parents let you be abused when you were a kid by people. Maybe your circumstances, and you're trying to navigate and work through the hurts of your past, and you hate your parents. In fact, you struggle to love God because you, you, the whole concept of a father troubles you. 
Listen, everybody, the only way you're going to get free is you have to learn to forgive your parents as Christ has forgiven you. Jesus says in the Lord's Prayer, Father, forgive me like I forgive others. Then he goes back and highlights and says, if you do not forgive your brother, then God will not forgive you. So we're called to forgive our parents. Now, we're not called. I'm going to bring this up. No one in this church, but we've had situations where there was an abusive grandparents and they thought it was appropriate to drop the kids off to grandma and grandpa when they were abusive because they would, they'd misapplied the scripture. No, if your grandparents abuse your children, do not have them go near them. If they're speaking death upon them, do not have them go near them. You honor them from afar. You have a responsibility to take care of your family, not at the expense of hurting your children. You can still honor your parents without subjecting yourself to abuse. However, you must forgive them from your heart and hand them over to the responsible people. That, hand them over to God. God will take care of a parent that is abused. Or call the authorities and report them. But you still need to honor them. How's that honoring my parents and reporting them to the authorities? Well, because you, you, by not giving them over to the authorities, they're hurting themselves. They need to learn what's right and wrong but you need to do it with respect. And so there's been situations where we've seen uh, children hand over their parents to the authorities because of what they did. Heinous things. That, does that make sense, everybody? But we don't hate them. We don't, you may hate it in your heart, but you must forgive, for God has forgiven you. How do you forgive? You hand them over for God. God, I forgive them in the name of Jesus. My emotions say nothing. I can't stand them. They make me sick. I want nothing to do with them, Father. This is how I feel. But Father, I hand them over to you. I forgive them in Jesus' name. And you forgive them as an act of a will. And every time they come up, you say, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. And hand them over to God. You must honor them in that capacity. But you don't have to condone what they're doing or have them in your life if they're bringing damage to you or to other people, but you must still honor them. And how do you do that? There's so much we could say about it, but obviously we, we don't have time today. One of the ways you honor them is make sure they're being taken care of. That you thank them. Try to find good things that they've done right for you. So I'm going to ask you to take a few moments right now. Maybe some of us need to forget of our parents. Let's take a moment right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe you were neglected. Maybe you were told things that were hurtful. But, you know, God forgave you. You've got to forgive your parents. So just take a moment right now. I'm going to leave you in a prayer to forgive your parents. Maybe in your own heart you can say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my parents. I thank you that through them I'm alive today. Lord, I'm hurt by what they did or did not do. But I choose to obey, obey your word. I choose to forgive them. I forgive my mother and my father for the things that they have done to me that have hurt me. I forgive them because you forgave me. Lord, I release them to you. I pray you would work out the details. But I choose to obey your word over my thoughts and over my feelings today, I forgive my parents in Jesus' name.